We all remember the parable of the Good Samaritan, where a traveler is beaten, robbed, and left for dead, while others walk by ignoring him. Only the Samaritan man stops to help him. Well, in today's gospel, we have a Samaritan woman, no relation, of course, considered an outcast by her community due to her adulterous reputation. In John's gospel, it is written, Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. Could she be considered a bad Samaritan? After all, when it came to relationships, her moral compass certainly required resetting, and the only reason she met Jesus at the well that afternoon hour was due to the fact that she was not welcome to socialize with the other woman who would go early in the morning to the well source for water in the comfort of the cooler morning weather. Upon her arrival at the well in the Samaritan city of Sichar, with the sole expectation of drawing water and making her way back to the community without a vent. Now, to her surprise, she finds herself amidst the company of a Jewish man, she doesn't know who Jesus is, who then engages her in conversation. In John's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Let's put the above in perspective. At that time, not only was it inappropriate for a man to converse with a woman, with them both not having any prior history together, it was considered ceremoniously unclean for a Jewish man to enter in contact with a conversation with a Samaritan woman, period. Jesus asking her for a drink reinforces her value and role as someone that he had faith in to plant the seed of evangelization. She does just that in John chapter 4. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. When it comes to being called to serve, Jesus doesn't discriminate. Here he calls someone at the other end of the social spectrum, and throughout history, Jesus' notoriety has been just that, not falling for the pitfalls of societal discrimination by laying down judgment. Are we as comfortable as Jesus when it comes to reinforcing the faith of others, even those living on the edge of society? I remember sharing with someone very close to me her concerns around her society in general, the views those living outside socially accepted norms. Not unlike the Samaritan woman, I assumed that she was referring to the homeless, the mentally ill, the physically abused, and the neglected. In her case, it was her sudden and abrupt change in family status, going from a married Catholic to that of a divorced mother of five, dealing with the rejection imposed by the sudden absence of invitation to assist at social gatherings whether it was through her circle of friends within the church community or outside. This truly disturbed her. She could relate to the emotional burden the Samaritan woman experienced on a daily basis, that of isolation and rejection. That special woman passed away on December 14, 2005. She was my mother. In judging others, how much harm do we inflict whether through our actions or our inability to act in good faith. In John chapter 3, For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. We are all called to serve and be saved. God just doesn't call anybody. He calls everybody. Jesus rejects the sin and embraces the sinner. This is the ultimate act of forgiveness. I'd like to leave you with the following quote for reflection from St. Teresa of Calcutta. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. So as we continue to journey this Lenten season in full anticipation of the resurrection of our true Savior, let us gather around those professing the faith of the Samaritan woman, as different and difficult this may be, for we are all called to share in the Lord's eternal life-giving water. And let us not judge, but let us open our hearts 
with compassion to forgive. Amen.